<laughs> Hi friends, thanks a lot for watching our Pop In The Band of video today. Today we get to meet with some subscribers that have come all the way from Washington State to camp with us. And then, later, we're going to help save a petroglyph for future hikers to be able to enjoy it. Come along! Good morning, Kofa. <laughs> That's the uh, Kofa National Wildlife Refuge, Palm Canyon's home territory. And this is sunrise. That sky there to the west looks a little dark. And... Uh, the sky is pretty red this morning. The old uh, sailor's tail is red sky at night, sailor's delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. <laughs> Meaning it's a predictor of future storms, p possible future storms for the day. This uh, this hill right here behind the Millennium Falcon and our campsite, I've I've really had kind of an infatuation for it since the the very moment that I came here. The interesting thing to me is I grew up in the fifties watching cowboy Saturday morning cowboy shows, and that hill is exactly what in that day we called the Indians would all hide behind in a uh, in a line single file left to right right to left with just barely their eyes peeking up over the horizon of the hill watching the white man so they could prepare their attack <laughs> so I have been sitting here in this campsite in imminent danger <laughs> for several days but look at that sunrise isn't that something wowie zowie yabba dabba beautiful <laughs> that is just absolutely insanely gorgeous what a a great what a great painter of portraits God is. Amazing. This is going to be nearly 360 degrees of this kind of gorgeous beauty. It's about uh, 7.30. I believe it's uh, Monday morning. And... Uh, this is just a stupendous view. Here we have the uh, Millennium Falcon and uh, two U-Haul uh, vans. Those vans belong to viewers that follow the Papa and the Bandit channel. And they uh, were out in... They, li they actually snowbird from Washington out to Apache Junction. And their son came down from Washington. And uh, they followed, uh, been following my videos. And they knew that I was camping out here. So they decided, well, you know, we're going to go camp. And we're going to go out and find Papa. <laughs> and we're going to go camp with Papa. And so uh, they, they rented those vans. And uh, got some mattresses to throw in the back and some camping equipment to throw in the back. And out they came and they found me. Not that hard to find. <laughs> uh, oh. Here we are. Uh, just a second, Gary. Here we are, uh, Papa Dale. And we've got uh, Bob and, and Gloria, right? Wanda. 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 I don't know why I keep wanting to call you Gloria. <laughs> Bob and Wanda and Gary and Ari. Right? And uh, we're out here in the Kofa National Wildlife uh, Reserve. And uh, these guys came all the way from Apache, uh, Apache Junction, Arizona, 
just to camp with Papa and the Bandit, and we've had a great time. So I want uh, I want Gary to uh, tell the story about how this all came to be. Prong. 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 Okay, Gary Prong, and and here's Ori, his girlfriend, and here's Wanda, and here's Bob, and uh, they all came down to camp with Papa and the Bandit. More so with the Bandit, I think, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> We've had a good time. Listen to some of Papa's stories too. So Gary, how is it that you all came ended up coming down here and finding me? Well, ironically, uh, this all started in Seattle, and uh, we ended up coming down to visit my folks at Apache Junction over the holiday weekend. And it just so happened that the uh, RTR was going on r about the same time. And at that point, I decided I was telling my mom that I wanted to go. I've been wanting to go to the RTR for a couple of years in my own rig. And it just hasn't worked out because um, I'm still working on it uh, in Seattle. And uh, so, ironically, uh, we decided to rent some U-Haul vans and uh, look, grab some camping gear and uh, makeshift camp and come out here to the desert and uh, see if we could find uh, Papa Dale and the Bandit. Cool. And and how is it that you knew that uh, Bandit and I were out here? Oh, my... Uh, uh, Mom and Dad had uh, watched your video and uh, basically drove right to him. Drove right here, huh? Yeah, drove literally. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'm so glad you did. We've had a good visit for the last couple of days. Ari, where are you from? Seattle. You're from Seattle? Mm -hmm. Okay. And how did you meet Gary? <laughs> Maybe you don't want to tell that story. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. You just want to be there and be uh, quiet and silent, right? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Well, we've enjoyed your presence and your company too. And Wanda and Bob, it's been so nice to visit with you. And uh, anything that you need to correct on Gary's story, because, you know, kids always embellish and, <laughs> and all of that. Well, I was going to say originally, uh, Bob and I met you over at that's Eric's right get together at the Quinault casino ocean shores in yep. washington yep yeah that yep. was a couple of years ago two and a half years yep ago. yeah and we've been following your channel ever since awesome we didn't know about it before then um and you always have great content and awesome we enjoy your commentary and we'd been watching and we knew you were up here for a few days and we wanted to find you and, uh Basically, that was it. We found you. <laughs> well, you sure did. Boy, you drove right up. I'm looking out there and seeing these U-Hauls pull up into my campsite, and I'm going, holy smoke, is somebody moving out here? What's yeah, the, what's can, the deal? And we can thank Eric, Nomadic Fanatic, for that suggestion. For that idea. Gary remembered from one of his videos Yeah. Uh, when he was having some uh, work done on Oh, he was transitioning between vehicles. Oh, he was. Okay. Yeah, and he, yeah, he rented a U-Haul. He rented a U-Haul to, to basically move into for a day while he was moving all his stuff in and and uh, transitioned over to that way. Yeah. I thought that was an ingenious idea, so I decided yep. to do the same down here. And I was like, the, the, the vehicle cost is considerably less than a traditional vehicle, and yep. uh, we got more space, and we could actually, like, sleep in the back. So what a, what a great deal. Hey, if you're a camper and uh, you can have access to a little bit of camping gear, it's a, it's a great, uh, great choice, a great thing to do. What do you got to say, Bob? Or are you just going to be the strong, silent type here to this morning? Well, you know, I mean, of... look at this guy. Look how clean and sharp he is. He's the only one of us that has spent the time this morning to go over and take his Navy shower. And he's looking sharp, man. He looks like he's ready to go out on a Saturday night date. Well, it's all started, you know, one and I, our first camper was a van. Ah. And I changed it into a conversion van that you could sleep in and so forth. Gary was like three years old or something like that. And we went over to eastern Washington uh, camping in that van. Unfortunately, it rained every day that we were there. We had to come back home. <laughs> <laughs> and I had building a big old fence. <laughs> we had two weeks off, too. Oh, boy. But ever since then, we've still had other vans and trailers. And we've camped all of our lives. Been in Washington forever. My parents, uh, that's all they did is boondock and camp all in over the state of Washington and Quartzsite. Awesome. In Mexico was 16 years in a row. They ended up in, in Arizona because uh, they've seen pretty much everything down there in, in uh, Mexico. And so 
we decided since we were traveling this way, let's go see what Apache Junction looked like. Well, we liked it so much and it was inexpensive to live there, so we decided to try it and we've been coming down here ever since. Awesome. So you have a place up in Olympia and then you uh, snowbird down here to Apache Junction. That is correct. And you have an RV that you go off and uh, spend time out in the desert, in the mountains, on weekends and such. That's right. You yeah, think you're going to ever get to a point where you'll full-time RV? Oh, no. No? No. We like to, we can leave and be gone as long as we want. Yep. And that's all, all it counts. We, we kind of like to have a good home base. You like being a weekend warrior? Well, that or a month. Yeah, retired, awesome. So we can do anything we want. Awesome. Great. So we're so happy that you guys did decide to come and uh, so happy that you found us out here in the desert. And uh, we certainly are enjoying your company. Thanks a lot for coming, guys. Later that morning, Gary and Ari and I decide to go hike up Palm Canyon. It'll be my second time, but I'm not sad about that because the last time I forgot to shoot video of the petroglyph up there. Okay, no worries, we've only got about another mile to go. Always is. Right, yeah. Yeah, so here we are at Palm Canyon once again. There are people that are climbing up the uh, the actual canyon where the palms are. If uh, you look in closely, you can see them. They, they go all the way up there to the top. And uh, there are some people up there that are hiking in and amongst those palms. I can't really quite zoom in on them because this camera doesn't want to focus up there very well but uh, that's it well Gary and Ori and I uh, got up here and uh, this is the rock that the petroglyph is on you can see the head of what looks to be a cow off to the right and the body uh, kind of going more central and at the bottom center you can see the legs coming down um, behind it uh, when I was here a couple days ago was an arrow that uh, was pointing at the animal. and uh, But just in the, the two days or so since I was here last, uh, the petroglyph has been defaced. Some fool was up here and actually took it out of its resting spot because it's only a couple hundred pounds weight stone. And when we got here, we found it face down in front of this larger stone in the dirt right there and uh, Gary and uh, another hiker uh, picked it up. I, I recognized the stone and I knew that the petroglyph was there and so uh, I asked Gary and another hiker to uh, set it back upright so people could view it and enjoy it but uh, gosh who knows uh, because it is such a, a small on such a small stone and easily moved who knows if uh, it'll stay there for very long uh, there are a lot of fools that come out hiking. Really irritates me. It's a uh, clip of me with the petroglyph. Who knows how much longer this stone will be here before some idiot just totally destroys it. So uh, I'm getting a picture of Papa with the petroglyph. It's Papa and the petroglyph. I may rename my YouTube channel. Papa and the petroglyph. How does that sound? <laughs> wow, guys, look at the... Uh, look at the holes in the side of this rock where the miners just blasted out looking for gold that's just amazing and then then look gary and i found a lot more palm trees in the cave than what i noticed when i was here the other day look look right in there see that palm tree right in the center of the screen there and uh, they, 
They have seeds have landed in in the rocks there in this rock face, and there are just uh, a dozen or more uh, palm trees that have sprung up on this rock face here. And this rock face is just tremendous. It is. It's way more than 90 degrees. It's about 95 or maybe even 100 degrees leaning over right over towards the top of us. It is, uh, it is phenomenal. What a phenomenal place this canyon is. I'm so glad that, that I came back here today. Well, I actually uh, climbed up on one of the side cliffs here. There's the trail there. And uh, I saw this uh, indentation in the rock wall here, and uh, it sure looked pretty interesting. So I thought, well, I'm going to come up here and, and check it out. didn't look like it was too hard or too dangerous. And uh, I find all of this uh, bighorn sheep scat up here. It almost looks like deer pellets or almost even rabbit pellets. But So... Yeah, well, that almost tripped right there, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. -y. Uh, yeah, isn't that something to be up here on this cliff? I think that this canyon deserves special treatment. He have a <laughs> where the people are uh, I thought it was somebody had built a fire and oh, Gary climbed up there I was up there too but uh, but uh, that's not a soot from a fire that's a vein of coal that goes uh, right into the mountainside there pretty cool well we got a campfire going tonight and here we have uh a couple of viewers that uh, figured out where I was, not too hard uh, to figure out since I've been telling everybody that I've been up at Palm Canyon, <laughs> but uh, Bob and Gary made their way on up here, so uh, I'll turn the camera around and let you uh, have them give you a shout out. Hey, Gary, what do you got to say to YouTube world? Howdy from Renton, Washington. Renton, Washington. Olympia, Washington. Olympia, Washington. We got to come clear down to the Arizona desert to meet a couple of fellow Washingtonians. We sniffed, we sniffed you out. <laughs> sniffed me out, and we're out here. We're out here behind the Millennium Falcon. There, see there, it says Millennium Falcon, and uh, we got this nice bonfire going. It's awesome. So, at the count of three, what do we got to say, fellas? One. Two, three, yabba dabba do. <laughs> I was happy to climb Palm Canyon a second time with Gary and Ari and to help save the petroglyph for future hikers to enjoy. I hope you, my friends, enjoyed this video and I hope you subscribe and click the bell and we'll see you next time. <laughs>